So we know if a line is horizontal, that means its slope is zero. So all we need to do is find its slope, basically its derivative, and figure out where that is zero. So for the first one, we can see that our slope will be zero oopsie, uh, here when x is negative two. Um, and so since they drew the picture, we can see that we have a horizontal tangent line uh, at negative two. And for number two, we can see we have horizontal tangent lines there and there. But we'll prove it with our derivative and setting that equal to zero. So we take our derivative, negative two x minus four, and we maybe factor that, negative two times x plus two, and we can see that this is zero when x is negative two. And so the point, let's see if they want the full point or if they just want, oh, yeah. So when x is negative two, uh, and then they want the actual ordered pair there, so we could just find the y by plugging it back in. We have a lovely equation that tells us what y equals. So that's negative, negative two squared minus four times negative two minus six. So that's negative four plus eight minus six. So that's negative two. So negative two, negative two, check. And that is indeed the point there where it's horizontal. Sweet. We do it again. So we take our derivative, y prime equals negative three x squared plus six x. We maybe factor that negative 3x times x minus 2. And we can see this equals 0 when x is 0 or when x is 2. To get the ordered pairs, uh, when x is 0, the y is uh, 0 plus 0 minus 1. So basically you have the point 0, negative 1. And then when x is 2, plugging it back into the y equals, we have negative 2 cubed plus three times two squared minus one. So that's negative eight plus 12 minus one. So that is three. And so we have the point two, three, check. And then we can see, ah, yes, that is two, three. Yes, that is zero, negative one. All is right with the world. Cool, we do it again. So here we don't have a graph to confirm, but we just take our derivative x, maybe factor out a negative x to get 3x minus 2. We can see this equals 0 when x is 0 or when x is 2 thirds. Uh, to get our ordered pairs, uh, when x is 0, we'd have the point 0, negative 2. And when x is 2 thirds, oh geez, you just plug it in y negative 2 thirds plus 2 thirds squared minus 2 is negative four ninths plus four ninths. Oopsie, this should have been cubed, sorry. So this is negative eight twenty-sevenths plus four ninths minus two. I'll get a common denominator of twenty-seven. So this is negative eight twenty-sevenths plus twelve twenty-sevenths minus fifty-four twenty-sevenths. So this is 4 minus 50 20 sevenths. Lovely. So then your other point is going to be when the x was 2 thirds, the y was negative 50 20 sevenths. Cool. And again, so we take our derivative using quotient rule. So the derivative of the top is 0, and then times the bottom doesn't matter, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom square the bottom and off we go. And then we want to figure out where this is zero. And it's basically zero when the top is zero, right? So the top is zero when x is zero, because negative two times zero would be zero. And it doesn't make the bottom zero, so this is good. So x is zero is our point. And when x is zero, the y would be one over zero squared minus one. So that's just negative one. So the point is zero, negative one. All right. And they don't have pictures, but again, always you can check these on Desmos, see that there really is a little lovely horizontal tangent line uh, at that point. Let's see. So we do it again. Y prime is three X squared minus four X. 
So factor out an x, we have 3x minus 4. So when x equals 0, 4 at 4 thirds, because we want to know when it equals 0 again, because we're trying to find a horizontal tangent. My, my calculus teacher used to get upset with us when we kept setting things equal to 0 and had no reason. But we have a reason here. Uh, we want a horizontal tangent line. It's tangent when the slope, it, it's horizontal when the slope is 0. That's the slope of a horizontal line. And of course, we could plug these in. When x is 0, we'd have the point 0, 2, just plugging it back in for the y. And when x is 4 thirds, we would have y equals 4 thirds cubed minus 2 times 4 thirds squared plus 2, which is 64 twenty sevenths minus uh, 2 times 16 is 32 ninths plus 2. Get a common denominator of 27. Uh, let's see, it's 96 twenty sevenths plus 54 twenty sevenths. And if you add those all up, you should get, I'm lazy, uh, 22 twenty sevenths. 22 twenty sevenths. And so that'll be the point uh, 4 thirds comma 22 twenty sevenths. All right, we do it again. So we got y prime is negative 3x squared plus 18x over 2, which would just be 9x minus 12. We factor out a negative 3x squared minus 3x plus 4. So we get negative 3 times x minus 4 times x plus 1. And then... Um, so the x would be a 4 or a negative 1. Negative 3 will never equal 0. So you'll have 4 comma something, negative 1 comma something. I'm not going to bother to plug them in anymore. You can plug them into the y equals. Check your answers at the bottom. It's fine. We can plug stuff in. So again, we take a derivative. Um, we've got, I'm going to put the plus and negative because I never see that negative on the bottom. So that'll make it easier. So the derivative of the top is 0 times the bottom, doesn't matter, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And so this is looking like 2 over x minus 3 squared. And if you're looking for this where it equals 0, you're basically looking for where 2 equals 0, where the top is 0. And that never happens. So there's no horizontal tangent line for this one. Uh, that's okay. It's not all graphs have to have horizontal tangent lines. Let's see, we do it again. I'm going to put this up here, so plus a negative. We take our derivative. Derivative at the top is 0. We're using quotient rule times the bottom. And then minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Square the bottom and off we go. Uh, this will basically equal 0 when the top is 0. So we have 2x over x squared plus 1 squared. So if we set this equal to 0, multiplied both sides by the bottom, you'd basically be looking at where the top is 0. So when x is 0, and then you could plug that in to get the y would be, this is easy enough, 1 over 0 comma negative 1. All right, a little bit of chain rule. So power rule first, bring the half down, leave the inside the same. Subtract 1 from the power, chain rule multiplied by the derivative of the inside, and clean this up just because I can. We're basically looking at um, the 2's cancel, so you have a negative 1 on top, over the square root of negative 2x plus 4. And if we want to find out where this is 0, if we multiply both sides by the bottom, we'd basically be looking at negative 1 equals 0. So since the top never equals 0, there's no horizontal tangent line here either. So that's okay though. Last one, we've got a derivative of negative cosecant would be positive cosecant x cotangent x. And we want to know where this is 0. So we want to know where either the cosecant x equals 0 or where the cotangent of x equals 0. Either one of those would do it. Uh, the cosecant of x, 
you can think of it in a couple ways. I was picturing the graph, but I don't feel like drawing the graph. So if you have 1 over sine of x equals 0, again, if you multiply both sides by sine, you're getting 1 equals 0. So this guy isn't going to give you any solutions. Uh, cotangent of x equals 0, that's the cosine of x over sine of x equals 0. So basically, this will equal 0 when the cosine is 0. And if you're just looking from negative pi to pi, the cosine value, the x value, will be 0 when x is um, pi halves. And also at negative pi halves, because you're going from negative pi all the way to pi. So here and here, those would be the two x values. I'll go ahead and put in the y values just because I can. So when x is pi halves, the y would be negative cosecant of pi halves, which is basically negative 1 over the sine of pi halves. And the sine of pi halves is 1, so we're negative 1. So we have the pi halves comma negative 1. And then when x is negative pi halves, we'd have y equals negative cosecant negative pi halves, which is negative 1 over the cosecant of negative pi halves. No, sorry, 1 over the sine. And at negative pi halves, uh, the sine is a negative 1, so negative 1 over negative 1 is positive 1. So then we'd have the point uh, negative pi halves comma positive 1. So we have this, and we have this, and we'll check it because we can. Negative pi halves 1, pi halves negative 1. Yay, it looks good. There we go.